Hey folks, how's it going? Today we're going to be having fun connecting a really cool piece of hardware to Touch Designer, which is the Stream Deck by Elgato. I think this is a very, very, very cool piece of kit to add into anybody's toolbox for a bunch of reasons. Before we dive in, I think one of the most interesting features about this is how great the actual Stream Deck software is, which we're going to look at really quickly today, as well it kind of finds the perfect balance for me in between something like a MIDI controller and an iPad or something. Because what it allows us to do is not only have these really tactile nice buttons on here, but every single button actually has a little screen behind it and we can actually customize, put whether it's videos, images, icons, or anything like that as the background of each button and even change their states while we're using them. Now we're not going to get that advanced today, but what we're going to look at today is how to take this Stream Deck and have its messages come over into Touch Designer. So that way what we can do is basically control content directly from our Stream Deck. So if we're going to dive in with this, let's get started here. I'm going to delete everything inside of Touch Designer. We're going to go over how to set it up. But before I do that, let's open up the Stream Deck software here. And what I'm going to do is delete the old little examples I have set up here. And we're going to talk about a little bit about how the Stream Deck software works, and then we're going to dive into that touch designer side. Now, if you've never used the Stream Deck before, there are tons of great YouTube videos on how to get into it, especially when it comes to what kind of plugins it has. You can see even in this default installation, there's really useful functionality built in for things like doing game capture elements, controlling OBS Studio, um, having different kinds of system controls, whether they're hotkeys, if you're doing macro recordings, opening websites, controlling multimedia, and it even has a pretty good amount of functionality built in for connecting up to different social media platforms like Twitter, YouTube, Twitch, and then actually controlling elements from those platforms live from your little device here. Now, one of the cool things about the Stream Deck is actually how active the community is in their plugin development. So if I go ahead and click this little plus button up here, this takes me to their store. And I haven't really seen anything for sale on the store because everything that I've seen is free, but there are tons of stuff. So they've got lots of cool blog posts and little articles about what you can do with it. But if we go down to the left side and hit plugins, this is where a lot of the magic happens. And even just by scrolling through, you can kind of get an idea of how many different things you can control directly from this device without too much kind of work from your end. You know, we're talking about things like getting control over Discord, or as we saw up here, doing things like controlling your Spotify or Twitch studio apps, getting information like things like whether it's a clock, uh, CPU usages, controlling Twitch, and you can see there are a lot of things. And this even goes sometimes even outside of the gaming space, like controlling VS Code, being able to send and uh, manipulate MIDI messages, doing things like controlling, uh, I saw it over here, IFTTT. I mean, so even leaving the gaming world completely, there's a lot of fun things you can do with the Stream Deck. So I highly recommend grabbing a Stream Deck. I think even the mini one is a great thing to put into everyone's toolkit. But one of the tricky things with it is how are we going to generate this communication between our Stream Deck and something like Touch Designer. Now, in this case, what we're going to do in Touch Designer is actually open up a web server, which the Stream Deck is going to be able to make API requests against. And then we're going to parse those different API requests to control our things in Touch Designer. Now, to do this, what we can do in the left side of the plugins is go to Developer Tools. This is where you're going to find a lot of the more kind of nitty gritty types of things. And what I mean by nitty gritty is a lot of libraries for doing web requests. Because it's a really popular thing that you might want to do with your Stream Deck is hit a button and just do an API request. Now, in this case, I'm using this API Ninja by Bar Raider plugin. I find this is a great one. Seems to be well supported, has gotten a lot of updates. And you can go ahead and install it in the top right. I've already gone ahead and done that. And once we close this out, we can actually come back into our Stream Deck configuration area, come down to the bottom here where our new plugins are going to be added. And here we see the bar raider. And I can go ahead and grab this API Ninja and drag and drop it into any of the available keys here on this page of my Stream Deck. 
So if I drop it into the top area here, I can already see that it has a default little icon and we can actually see that my stream deck already is showing that custom little icon, which is one of the best things about this stream deck. Now, when I'm going through and setting this up, there is not a lot of things that we have to worry about. I could go ahead and give this a title. So maybe if I'm going to have a scene one and a scene two, I could call this scene one. And you can see as I'm typing, I get that displayed on the editor as well as right on the device. And that's what I mean. It's, it's a really cool way to combine that tactile feel of something like a MIDI controller with that flexibility of something that has a screen like an iPad. But what we can also do is let's not use a name, let's use an image. So I'm gonna go ahead and click over here on the icon and I'm gonna open the Stream Deck icon library because Stream Deck already comes with tons of great little icons that we can use. So we could, for example, grab maybe the crown for my one icon and then for my other icon, I will maybe grab something of a different color, I think. Let's do the green play button. Now, the nice thing is you can also import your own images and videos for this, which is really great. But now we have to actually set up our web request. So the first thing I'm gonna do is before actually setting it up inside of Stream Deck, I'm gonna hop back into Touch Designer and set up my web server. And if you're in kind of the newer 2021 build, this is gonna be really easy to do because we have a new DAT for it. And that is the web server DAT. Now, if you haven't seen it, we're going to put a link in the description as well to another blog post we have about using the web server DAP because it's a really helpful tool to use. I've even used it to get Siri commands from iOS devices through automations and Python to control touch designer installations. And all that can be done with this web server DAP. So the first thing I'm going to do is activate it, turn it on, and I'm going to take note of the port number because this is really important. We're going to grab this port number and we're going to need this information inside of Stream Deck. I'm also going to open up the docked DAT that it has here because this is where our call callbacks are, where we can put all of our little Python code. So I'm going to right click on this, select edit contents, and I can see it already has a bunch of functions in here, a little bit of documentation at the top, and some boilerplate code. Now, what this code does here is that every time a, an HTTP request comes into our web server inside a touch designer, it's automatically going to build this response and send it back to that client. So in this case, it's going to send a 200 status code, which is good because on the web 200 means success. Uh, if you know other famous static code, status codes like 404 not found is a famous one or 400, You've probably seen these and didn't even know that there's a lot of them out there. Status reason basically just says okay as well. And then this data sends back HTML that says touch designer in bold and then the name of the actual web server DAT. Now in our cases, we don't really need that. We can just send the server the 200, say it's all okay, and then we can actually get to parsing our request that's coming in. Now the nice thing is we can see the arguments here we have our web server DAT, so that's a reference going back to the web server DAT. We have our request, which is where we're going to work here. And then we have the response, which as we just saw is the response we're crafting and sending back. But let's go to our request and we can see the request here is a dictionary of different fields and data. And we can see we have a method, a URI, pars, client address, server address, and data. Now, in this case, what I find to be really easy when it comes to working with Stream Deck is instead of worrying too much about the data that we're sending, because I often find the kinds of automations and more complex scripting you'll probably want to do on the touch designer side of anyways. So your Stream Deck is more of going to be a programmable controller that triggers this more advanced functionality. So I'm not going to worry too much about sending complex data from the Stream Deck, just really simple commands. And a really nice way I can do this is actually by using the URI. And the URI basically in this case is going to be everything after the first forward slash in the web address that we're going to when we're pinging this web server. So that'll all become much more clear very soon. But for now, let's just do something simple and let's print the whole request out. Every time we get a request coming in, let's print it out to our text port that we have open here and see what kind of data is in there. 
So we have the listening side of our code ready. So we can go back into Stream Deck here and let's go through setting up one of these API calls. So the nice thing is, it's very easy to do. We have a request type here, which you can set to the common HTTP requests. In this case, we only really need a get because we're not sending or posting any data to the server. We're just hitting a specific URL and that's gonna trigger our command. Now, this is where knowing how the URL structure works is great because first we know it's a web server. So it's gonna be an HTTP colon slash slash because it's an HTTP request. Now, because my stream deck in this case is connected to the same computer that Touch Designer is running on, I don't even need to worry about IP addresses because what I can say is go to the local host, which is basically networking terminology talk for I, it, the servers running on the same computer as me. And then what I can do is put a colon and then I put the port number here. So in this case, it was important to remember that my web server was on port 9980. So I'm going to do 9980 and then a forward slash. And now remember after the forward slash, whatever I type is going to be inside of my URI. So I could even do something as simple as have this one be HTTP colon slash slash localhost colon 9980 forward slash scene one. And then I can have the other button be forward slash scene two. Now, before I set up the other button, there's really not much else you have to set up down here. If you wanted to, for example, send different kinds of headers and values, maybe you're making API requests to something that isn't touch designer, or if you want to send a bigger kind of data load across that pipe, you can do those in the nice fields below here. If you do that, just make sure that in the content type, you also suggest whether it's an application JSON format or whether it's just plain text you're sending. So that way it doesn't have any errors. Everything else here, I feel like you probably won't need to really worry too much on a regular basis. So our request is basically done. So what I can do is also already set up my second request. I know it's going to be a get. I know I'm going to HTTP colon slash slash localhost colon 9980 forward slash scene two. Great. So now I don't need to set up anything else here. And really with that said, that's kind of the crux of how easy it is to grab this stream deck and connect it up to touch designer. And this really leans into this new web server DAT. So now we can see, for example, if I go ahead and start hitting my buttons, we can see these different requests coming in. So scene one, I see here and URI scene two, and I can go back and forth and be hitting these and getting all of those triggers inside a touch designer. Now that's great because we've got the hard part of the pipeline set up and, and the fun thing is, I don't know if you saw, but they have a nice little status notification. So every time I hit it, when I get a successful API request, it puts a little check mark on side of the, inside of the box. It's pretty cute. So now we have these requests coming in. We see them in touch designer. How do we parse them, pull out the information we want and then use it to control a scene? So what I'll do is just even as a simple example, I'm gonna make two movie file in tops and I'm gonna point each one at a different kind of template nature asset that comes with touch designer. And I'm gonna plug those both into a switch top. And that's just gonna be my basic, you know, scene or creative environment that I wanna control with my buttons. And essentially what I'm gonna do is if it's scene one, I'm gonna set this index in my switch to zero. And if it's scene two, I'm gonna set it to be a value of one. And that's basically just gonna switch between my two pieces of content. So I'll go ahead and put a null top at the end of this and turn on the display flag just so that we can see it nice and big in the background. And then I'm gonna open up my callbacks again. And what I'm gonna do is actually parse through this request so right now we are printing out the whole request, which we learned was a dictionary. Now in Python, we know how to deal with dictionaries. So for example, if I wanted to specifically print out the URI, I could type in print request. And because of the dictionary, I know I'm going to use a set of square brackets to go inside of it. And I know that inside of it, I want to address the different data points by their names, or as we say in Python, the key. 
So in this case, I'm going to put a set of quotation marks because it's a string name that I'm calling. And I'm going to say URI. And actually what I can do is even comment out the print request before that just so it doesn't spam my text for it as much. So now if I go ahead and start going back and forth and hitting those buttons, I can see scene one, scene two, scene one, scene two, back and forth, back and forth. So now that I have this string that really is essentially the command I want to run, it's really as easy as just doing a simple if statement, checking the value of this request URI, and then acting on it however we want to act on it inside of our project. So I could say if my request square brackets quotation marks URI two equals, because remember two equals is comparison, and I'll put another set of quotation marks and I'll say forward slash scene one. Now inside of here, I can do whatever I want. So we said in this case, I wanted to control this switch. So I would start an op search, OP with the brackets inside of the quotation marks. I'd put the name switch one dot par to access its parameters. And then in this case, the parameter I want is the index. So I can click on it and see that the scripting name is index with a lowercase i. And then I can set that new value to be zero. So whenever it's scene one, I get that request for scene one, it's gonna go to that switch and set the index to zero. Or in this case, well, we wouldn't say or, in Python we say else if or elif our request uri double equals quotation marks, scene two. And then we can do the same thing, op switch one dot par dot index equals one. And I can go ahead and save that. Now, even with something that simple, we've been able to get an unknown device, in this case, a stream deck, bring its commands into touch designer, parse them with really just a few lines of the most basic Python, so you don't have to be a Python expert to get into this. And then we can start to create more and more complex ways of controlling our project. So in this case, it's just a simple control of a switch, but you could have much more advanced automation or changing of presets or anything like that inside of there. Now we can test to see if this works. So I'll go ahead and start hitting my buttons here. So I see scene one, scene two. And now just with those few lines of code, I'm able to quickly switch between these scenes just by hitting these buttons inside of the Stream Deck. So with that said, I think it's a really nice piece of, of kit to have. It's really great to have in the tool belt. I use it a lot for when we're doing live streaming. I also actually use it when I'm doing development because I can put some more complex keyboard shortcuts that I don't like hitting. Uh, like I said, the Stream Deck has a ton of features in terms of what kind of apps it can connect to you'd be surprised at how many different apps it could connect to just for doing things like media management, grabbing screenshots, screen recordings, controlling OBS, super flexible tool. And this is an example of how you can plug it into Touch Designer. Enjoy. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you're serious about taking your Touch Designer and interactive skills to the next level, I highly recommend you check out the Interactive and Immersive HQ Pro. It's the only educational resource and community of its kind for touch designer and interactive professionals. You can learn more by checking out the link in the description. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and the little bell icon for more awesome free content.